Britain did not allow Ukraine to hit Russia with storm shadow missiles. The UK has clarified that it did not give Ukraine permission to use storm shadow missiles to strike Russian territory, the Telegraph writes, citing the country's Ministry of Defence. The UK government's policy on deploying long-range missiles has not changed, despite comments from Prime Minister Keir Starmer suggesting he was easing restrictions on their use. The British government has allowed Kyiv to fire missiles at targets in Crimea and mainland Ukraine since they were delivered last year, but has banned the country from using them to hit targets inside Russia. Officials are concerned that such a move would escalate the war and could drag Britain into conflict with Russia. The newspaper reports. It is noted that, according to sources, Zelensky will have to look for guarantees elsewhere before Ukraine can launch cruise missiles at Russian territory. They added that permission to launch strategic missiles at Russia would require the approval of three countries, not just Britain. Storm shadows, precision-guided cruise missiles with a firing range of over 250 kilometers, have been used by British and French air forces in the Gulf, Iraq and Libya. The UK confirmed that it would supply Ukraine with storm shadows in May last year. Defence Secretary John Healy officially approved Kyiv's use of storm shadow missiles for strikes inside Russia. Healy affirmed Britain's commitment to helping Ukraine fight the Russian forces, but did not discuss operational arrangements. Reacting to the news, Dmitry Peskov, a spokesperson for Russian President Vladimir Putin, said, If this is so, then, of course, this is another absolutely irresponsible step towards escalating tensions and seriously escalating the situation. We will be watching this very thoroughly and respond accordingly, Peskov noted. Meanwhile, France, Germany, Italy and Poland signed a letter of intent yesterday to develop ground-launched cruise missiles with a range beyond 500 kilometers, aiming to fill what they say is a gap in European arsenals exposed by Russia's war in Ukraine. Ukraine can fight against Russian fighters together with European air defense forces. The creation of a unified air defense system should be one of the points of agreement on the defense of Ukraine. Anatoly Krapchinsky, deputy director general of a company of Ukraine that produces electronic warfare equipment, aviation expert, shared this on Espresso TV. If Poland's air defense systems operate from its territory, their range will be limited to 150 kilometers. If we consider the possibility of entering Ukrainian airspace, then we can cover the entire right bank of Ukraine, even reaching Kyiv. There are aircraft in Poland that Sweden is going to give us. These, along with F-16s, can work effectively. This way, not only Kyiv can be protected, but also other regions. However, this is a matter of closing the airspace by the military forces of another country, he said. A unified air defense force in Europe would allow aircraft not only from Poland, but also from France and Romania to defend Ukraine's airspace. However, this is a complicated issue of diplomacy, said Krapczynski. Poland is actively advocating for the creation of a unified European Air Defence Force aiming to unify all countries into a single system. This would significantly enhance coordination of capabilities, allowing countries with larger systems to better distribute their forces. Ukraine could potentially join these forces, leveraging its unique experience in shooting down Russian KH-101 and Kinzhal missiles to share knowledge. We should use this thesis to negotiate with Europe about creating a unified air defense force. Ukrainian F-16s provided by Western partners could then be stationed in Poland or Romania without engaging in combat, which is legally easier to do. Poland would not agree to host planes conducting combat missions in Ukraine, as this would imply direct involvement in the war against Russia, the aviation expert concluded. Anatoly Krapczynski also noted that Russian forces are bluffing about being ready for F-16 aircraft in Ukraine. In June, the enemy carried out six massive combined strikes on Ukrainian airfields. Earlier, the Netherlands released a letter stating that they are authorizing the transfer of 24 F-16 fighter jets. Therefore, Russia is now actively trying to change approaches to check whether these aircraft are operating in Ukrainian airspace, Krapczynski explained. The aviation expert noted that after the first official reports about Ukraine's possible receipt of F-16s, the Russian forces launched two KH-101 missiles from the Caspian Sea. The Russians are trying to understand whether Ukraine has F-16 aircraft. In other words, the enemy is trying to model a system of strikes and test Ukraine's reaction to these strikes. Krapczynski added, 